Hello, everyone, welcome back to Bilal Consultancy. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of design of experiments, or DOE, in the simplest way possible. You don't need to be a scientist or an engineer to understand this we'll break it down for you step by step. So, let's get started. First things first, what is the design of experiments? Well, think of it as a powerful tool to help you make decisions and improve your processes. We use it to figure out what factors really matter and how they impact our outcomes. It's like creating a recipe to bake the perfect cake we want to know which ingredients and steps matter the most. Design of experiments dough, is a systematic, efficient method that enables scientists and engineers to study the relationship between multiple input variables, aka factors, and key output variables, aka responses. It is a structured approach for collecting data and making discoveries. When to use DOE To determine whether a factor or a collection of factors has an effect on the response. To determine whether factors interact in their effect on the response. To model the behavior of the response as a function of the factors. To optimize the response. History Ronald Fisher first introduced four enduring principles of DOE in 1926, the factorial principle, randomization, replication and blocking. Generating and analyzing these designs relied primarily on hand calculation in the past, until recently practitioners started using computer-generated designs for a more effective and efficient DOE. Why use DOE? DOE is useful in driving knowledge of cause and effect between factors, to experiment with all factors at the same time, to run trials that span the potential experimental region for our factors. It enables us to understand the combined effect of the factors, to illustrate the importance of DOE, let's look at what will happen if DOE does not exist. Experiments are likely to be carried out via trial and error or one factor at a time OFAT, method. In analysis, key concepts in creating a designed experiment include blocking, randomization, and replication. Blocking. When randomizing a factor is impossible or too costly, Blocking lets you restrict randomization by carrying out all of the trials with one setting of the factor and then all the trials with the other setting. Randomization refers to the order in which the trials of an experiment are performed. A randomized sequence helps eliminate the effects of unknown or uncontrolled variables. Replication Repetition of a complete experimental treatment, including the setup. A well-performed experiment may provide answers to questions such as What are the key factors in a process? In what settings would the process deliver acceptable performance? What are the key, main, and interaction effects in the process? What settings would bring about less variation in the output? A repetitive approach to gaining knowledge is encouraged, typically involving these consecutive steps. A screening design that narrows the field of variables under assessment. A full factorial design that studies the response of every combination of factors and factor levels and it attempts to zone in on a region of values where the process is close to optimization. A response surface is designed to model the response. Trial and error method. Test different settings of two factors and see what the resulting yield is. Say we want to determine the optimal temperature and time settings that will maximize yield through experiments. How the experiment looks like using the trial and error method. Conduct a trial at starting values for the two variables and record the yield. Adjust one or both values based on our results. Repeat step two until we think we found the best set of values. As you can tell, the cons of trial and error are inefficient, unstructured, and ad hoc. Worst if carried out without subject matter knowledge. Unlikely to find the optimum set of conditions across two or more factors. One factor at a time, OFAT, method. Change the value of one factor, then measure the response, and repeat the process with another factor. In the same experiment of searching optimal temperature and time to maximize yield, this is how the experiment looks using an OFAT method. Start with temperature. Find the temperature resulting in the highest yield, between 50 and 120 degrees. Run a total of eight trials. Each trial increases temperature by 10 degrees, i.e., 50, 60, 70, all the way to 120 degrees. With time fixed at 20 hours as a controlled variable, measure the yield for each batch. Run the second experiment by varying time to find the optimal value of time 
between 4 and 24 hours. Run a total of 6 trials. Each trial increases temperature by 4 hours, i.e., 4, 8, 12, up to 24 hours. With temperature fixed at 90 degrees as a controlled variable, measure the yield for each batch. After a total of 14 trials, we've identified the max yield, 86.7%, happens when temperature is at 90 degrees, time is at 12 hours. As you can already tell, OFAT is a more structured approach compared to trial and error. But there's one major problem with OFAT. What if the optimal temperature and time settings look more like this? We would have missed out on acquiring the optimal temperature and time settings based on our previous OFAT experiments. Therefore, OFAT's con is, we're unlikely to find the optimum set of conditions across two or more factors. How are trial and error and OFAT experiments look? Notice that none of them has trials conducted at a low temperature and time and near optimum conditions. What went wrong in the experiments? We didn't simultaneously change the settings of both factors. We didn't conduct trials throughout the potential experimental region. The result was a lack of understanding of the combined effect of the two variables on the response. The two factors did interact in their effect on the response. A more effective and efficient approach to experimentation is to use statistically designed experiments, DOE. Apply full factorial DOE on the same example. Experiment with two factors, each factor with two values. These four trials form the corners of the design space. Run all possible combinations of factor levels, in random order to average out effects of lurking variables. Optional, replicate the entire design by running each treatment twice to find out experimental error. Analyzing the results enables us to build a statistical model that estimates the individual effects, temperature and time, and also their interaction. It enables us to visualize and explore the interaction between the factors. An illustration of what their interaction looks like at temperature equals 120, time equals 4. You can visualize, explore your model, and find the most desirable settings for your factors using the JMP Prediction Profiler. DOE versus OFAT, Trial and Error. DOE requires fewer trials. DOE is more effective in finding the best settings to maximize yield. DOE enables us to derive a statistical model to predict results as a function of the two factors and their combined effect. Design of experiments template and example. Setting up a DOE starts with a process map. We created a design of experiments template, Excel, available for free download and use. Begin your DOE with three steps. Acquire a full understanding of the inputs and outputs being investigated. A process flowchart or process map can be helpful. Consult with subject matter experts as necessary. Determine the appropriate measure for the output. A variable measure is preferable. Attribute measures, pass, fail, should be avoided. Ensure the measurement system is stable and repeatable. Create a design matrix for the factors being investigated. The design matrix will show all possible combinations of high and low levels for each input factor. These high and low levels can be coded as plus one and one. For example, a two-factor experiment will require four experimental runs. Input a level input B level. Experiment number 1, 1, 1. Experiment number 2, 1 plus 1. Experiment number 3 plus 1, 1. Experiment number 4 plus 1 plus 1. Note, the required number of experimental runs can be calculated using the formula 2N, where N is the number of factors. For each input, Determine the extreme, but realistic, high and low levels you wish to investigate. In some cases, the extreme levels may be beyond what is currently in use. The extreme level selected should be realistic, not absurd. For example, one level plus one level. Temperature 100 degrees 200 degrees. Pressure 50 PSI 100 psi enter the factors and levels for the experiment into the design matrix. Perform each experiment and record the results. For example, temperature pressure strength. Experiment hash 1100 degrees 50 PSI 21 pounds. Experiment hash 2100 degrees 100 PSI 42 pounds. Experiment hash 3200 degrees 50 PSI 51 pounds. 
Experiment hash 4200 degrees 100 PSI 57 LBS Calculate the effect of a factor by averaging the data collected at the low level and subtracting it from the average of the data collected at the high level. For example, effect of temperature on strength. 51 plus 57. 2. 21 plus 42. 2 equals 22.5 pounds. Effect of pressure on strength. 42 plus 57. 2. 21 plus 51. 2 equals 13.5 pounds. The interaction between two factors can be calculated in the same fashion. First, the design matrix must be amended to show the high and low levels of the interaction. The levels are calculated by multiplying the coded levels for the input factors acting in the interaction. For example, input a level input B level interaction. Experiment number 111 plus 1. Experiment number 21 plus 11. Experiment number 3 plus 111. Experiment number 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 Calculate the effect of the interaction as before. Effect of the interaction on strength. 21 plus 57. 2. 42 plus 51. 2 equals 7.5 pounds. The experimental data can be plotted in a 3D bar chart. The effect of each factor can be plotted in a Pareto chart. The negative effect of the interaction is most easily seen when the pressure is set to 50 PSI and the temperature is set to 100 degrees. Keeping the temperature at 200 degrees will avoid the negative effect of the interaction and help ensure a strong glue bond. So, that's the design of experiments in a nutshell. It's a valuable tool that can help you make better decisions in any area of life. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Bilal Consultancy for more simplified explanations of complex topics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember, keep experimenting, and keep learning. That's the key to success. Bye for now.